Hi and welcome back to this course on Memories in VLSI. In the previous video, I have given a brief introduction on 60 SRAM cell. And in this video, we will look at the read operation of SRAM. So without wasting time, let's get started with the topic. So as I said before, an SRAM cell needs to be able to read, write, and to hold the data as long as the power is applied. And one of those features or one of those functionalities is to read. So in this video, we are going to see the read operation uh, completely from the bottom to the top, right? So SRAM cell operation in total is divided into two phases, phase one and phase two because they are not uh, related to each other as i say related to each other uh, one will uh, do the pre-charge operation and the evaluation is a different thing and this is uh, much more similar to dynamic cmos in dynamic cmos we have heard that there is something called as pre-charge and evaluation okay so usually we uh, show phase one and phase two something like this two clocks which uh, are complementary to each other but uh, in reality uh, it is the same clock cycle but half clock cycle is when the pre-charging is done and half the clock cycle is when the evaluation is done evaluation is where either read or write is done so pre-charging whom are we pre-charging we are pre-charging the bit lines i will explain it in much more detail so the bit lines will be initially will be floating high so what we do we take the bit lines which are just wires right so these wires are also connected to capacitances those are parasitic capacitances but still the capacitance will be very high because the uh, bit lines are shared now to understand the read operation, let's assume Q is initially zero. If Q is zero, then Q bar has to be one, right? And we have also assumed that bit line, which are bit and bit bar are uh, raised to high initially. And it's not just an assumption, it will always happen in pre-charging, right? It initially the pre-charging happens, then we go for read or write operation. So both of these bit lines are raised to high are floating high then we have this q0 and q bar 1 so now we want to read how do we read by setting this word line or raising this word line if we raise the word line both access transistor a1 and a2 will be turned on and we want to read through what bit and bit bar now bit bar is 1 and also q bar is 1 so it is okay this is what we are going to read but here in bit uh, we have one but q is zero so what is supposed to happen we need to pull this bit down or we need to uh, pull this to ground right so that's what is going to happen the current flows from bit through this access transistor through this driver d1 transistor to the ground right so this operation happens uh, as normal as possible but the problem here is our concern here is uh, we have a problem at this q okay because since the current flows here the d1 is trying to pull it down that is normal but the current flowing here increases the voltage here it will not be at zero because see if the current has to flow from this q to here what does it mean it has to be at higher voltage than that of the uh, ground right so this current flowing here tries to increase this voltage slightly up and even if it is very small value we have to be concerned why because this output is connected to the input of the transistors if it is connected to the input of the transistors initially uh, see if the output was zero how, how it was working if output was zero this q was zero then the pmos was turning on here right the pmos was turning on and it was pulling this to high q bar was high and this high was turning on this d1 so it would have pulled it down that the same thing is happening but if it increases or to reaches the level of the threshold voltage of this nmos transistor this uh, current flowing here it increases the voltage here if it reaches that voltage of the threshold of this transistor what will happen this will be pulled down the q bar will be pulled down and uh, that will again turn on this p1 transistor and this q will be pulled high is this normal this is flipping of the bit 
is it is not at all normal so in order to avoid this what is the requirement that we have the requirement is nothing but the d1 the driver transistor has to be very much stronger than that of the access transistor a1 okay if this happens if we make this very strong then whatever the current is coming here it will immediately pull it down to ground so that it will not allow the q the voltage at q to rise uh, very much right so if we don't allow that to happen let's say this is stronger than d1 then the access transistor is pulling the current here very fast but d1 is not pulling it down then the voltage here will increase which will again flip the bit that is not supposed to happen so the specific requirement is nothing but the transistors d1 and a1 should be ratioed in such a way that the node q remains in the switching threshold of p2 d2 inverter so this constraint is called as the read stability okay read stability of the sram cell and as we said the q momentarily rises but it will uh, not glitch through if we have uh, the d1 stronger than that of the a1 and during phase two the bit lines are pre-charged high right the word lines raised only in phase one the word line is not at all raised in phase two because in phase two there is no read or write operation happening and we also need to understand that this uh, bit line is a shared bit line it's not just for one single sram cell there are multiple sram cells uh, laid just below these uh, this sram right so all of them share the same bit line so it acts like a distributed dual rail footless dynamic multiplexer it's a long name don't worry about that just remember that it like it acts like a dynamic multiplexer because uh, mul what does multiplexer do uh, depending on the input it transfers that to output right multiple in inputs one of it will just transfers based on the select line it will transfer one of the input to the output but here also it is doing the same one of them one of the uh, uh, sram cells will be selected it will transfer the output of that sram cell depending on which sram cell is selected that's the reason why it is acting like a dynamic multiplexer but the capacitance of the entire bit line has to be discharged through the access transistor which is uh, making it a little slower so the uh, it should not be shared too much right the bit line should not be shared too much otherwise it will have a huge load right the output can be sensed by a high a, a pair of high skew inverters uh, high skew inverters are nothing but uh, the inverters whose n mos is a comparatively lower width than that of p mos p mos is much wider than that of n mos this is to um, speed up the process of uh, you know the rising of the signal so to do that the high skew inverters are used by raising the switching threshold of the sense inverters the delay can be uh, reduced at the expense of noise margin obviously delay can be reduced by uh, uh, reducing the threshold voltage but at the expense of noise margin we need to have a good noise margin as well which we will see in the further videos so this is just a trade-off uh, between the delay and the noise margin and as we see uh, it, it's the bit and the bit bar which uh, is the output so it's a dual rail uh, signal which is monotonically uh, a rising signal so this is about the read operation of uh, sram cell i hope you got some idea about uh, the entire read operation and uh, the important things such as uh, the read stability how the uh, reading operation happens uh, as well as the read stability why we need the driver transistors to be much stronger than that of the access transistors and all those things so uh, that's all in this video i'll see you in the next video thanks a lot for watching and bye